All right, guys, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing, and today I want to talk about what causes high ferritin, what ferritin, and what does it mean. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video, and don't forget to check the description. We have a lot of free downloads, a free thyroid reset we do every other fri Friday, and then a description of kind of what I talk about in the video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, show us a little love, but do yourself a benefit, hit that notification button wherever it is, I never know, so you get notified every single Wednesday when we put out a video. Let's jump in. Now, I think ferritin is probably one of the most highly misunderstood blood markers when it comes to... A blood marker, right? They, uh, most doctors look at ferritin as the iron marker, and it's really not. When you're talking about iron markers, remember, iron doesn't regulate iron. Calcium doesn't regulate calcium. Vitamin D doesn't regulate vitamin D. What I mean is, just because it's low doesn't mean you take it, it's going to make it go up. Of course, it will on a blood lab, but physiologically, when you're talking about iron and iron recycling, you're really talking about that reticular endothelial system, that iron recycling system that happens in the enterocytes in the gut, hepatocytes in the liver, the spleen, the bone marrow, and red blood cells. You know, you're talking about copper, retinol, bioavailable copper, which is a peroxidase enzyme called ceruloplasmin. You're looking at things like zinc, magnesium red blood cell, ferritin, iron, iron saturation, transferrin, all these different things which can be seen on a full Monty blood panel. And this gives you a full view of the iron recycling system, right? Are you not recycling iron? Where is it going wrong? How do you support yourself? Or are you overloaded with iron, right? Was that forest fire not being kind of attended to or that little fire that you have, that little campfire not attended to, and now you have a 500,000 acre forest fire, right? So what is ferritin? Well, ferritin is a protein that actually should be found in the cell. This is very important. In the cell, it should not be found in the blood. So in the cell, ferritin is loaded, right? It's a protein, it's loaded with iron via a peroxidase enzyme called ceruloplasmin. This is bioavailable copper, right? loads it in the cell. Any time ferritin protein does not have access to the peroxidase enzyme ceruloplasmin, why? Well, it could be because of chronic stress depleting, could be glyphosate depleting in the soil and the body. It could be synthetic, you know, supplements or supplements like iron, retinol palmitate, vitamin A. Uh, vitamin D, overtaking zinc supplements, all these different things. So there's a lot of things that can affect it. Birth control pills, some medications, the list goes on. But anytime the cell or ferritin protein doesn't have access to ceruloplasmin, the cell gets damaged. Ferritin gets damaged. And our ability to access iron now gets compromised. And this becomes a problem because now the cell becomes damaged, it becomes inflamed, and it becomes cytotoxic. And this is what you're seeing on a lab. And this is when light chain ferritin gets discharged from the cell into the blood where it should not be. Why? Because the cell is damaged because we don't have the ability to access that peroxidase enzyme. So now it's in the blood. So what we're seeing here is that ferritin should be in the cell and it should be in the blood. And when you see it in the blood, it's not a sign of iron vitality, it's a sign of tissue pathology. Because anytime you don't have access to this peroxidase enzyme, ceruloplasmin, right, of course, as I mentioned, is damaged. You don't have access to iron. But what happens is that ferritin is now in the blood and it gets degraded over time and it eventually becomes what's called hemosiderin, right? And hemosiderin, the problem with hemosiderin is it's like a bank vault. It will lock iron and hold it, and it's really hard to get it to let go, right? Hemosiderin, hemosiderin will begin to store iron in the tissues, the liver, the, the, the eyes, the spleen, the kidney, the bone marrow, etc. And when you talk about hemosiderin, it's a browning of the skin. It's not a birthmark. The best way to explain it is melasma, right? That brown tint that women get, that's that iron overload because you're not recycling iron, you degraded ferritin, and it, that little forest fire now is becoming, or that little fire is now becoming huge. 
Or you see sometimes overweight people or even underweight people with that kind of browning of their ankles. That is hemosiderin. You know that that little, for, that little fire to keep you warm is now a forest fire, right? That oxidative stress is now inflammation and calcification. We are in a state of emergency. And that's all because ferritin, right, is not being loaded with iron properly in the cell because we don't have that uh, enzyme that ceruloplasma, that bioavailable copper because of stress, supplements, medications, glyphosate, the list goes on, high fructose corn syrup. That leads to the degradation of ferritin in the, into the, from the cell into the blood, which causes a rise in hemocytin, which eventually will cause a rise in hepcidin in the liver. And the problem is this is a cascade of effects because eventually when it becomes, you know, when, when you become that much inflamed and you're, and you're, you're, Ferritin is being degraded and you're producing a lot of hepcidin, that will block the peroxidase enzyme and it'll block ferroporin. Ferroporin, basically what ferroporin does, which is another copper dependent peroxidase enzyme, it actually turns ferrous, dangerous iron, right, in the cell into ferric to be recycled into the body so we can use it so it's less dangerous. So when you damage that because of chronic stress, because ferritin gets degraded, you produce, you know, uh, hemosiderin and then hepcidin over time. Now you can't turn ferrous into ferric. You can't recycle it. You don't see it in the blood. It's in the tissues. And now it's more dangerous, which leads to more inflammation. So the cycle just keeps getting perpetuated all because in a simple sense, you have an inability to load iron into ferritin because you don't have copper. There's always an inverse relationship. And when you have enough copper, what happens is you can load it. You don't produce hemosiderin. You don't produce hepcidin. You don't see ferritin in the blood. You're recycling iron. You can activate oxygen at cell level. You can produce energy, which is money in the bank. You can produce all your copperous antioxidants, right? Catalase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione peroxidase, the list goes on. So what you're saying now is, now you're able to, over time, slowly put out the forest fire. The problem is people are here and they're trying to use a fire extinguisher with supplements to put out the forest fire and it doesn't work, right? So what do you need to do? Of course, this is a big topic, but what do you need to do? Well, it's really simple, but it's a process. I went through this myself in 2013. I was saturated, my ferritin was 1,000, my hemoglobin was 21, I was gray, my hair was falling out, my chronic pain, chronic constipation, I felt like I was dying. This is when we dove in and kind of created and added to our RTM method. Well, the first step is always food, 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 food. Do the RTM method, why? Because you need to decrease the stress response, which decreases the chelation of minerals. You need to eat healthy foods, don't eat GMO foods, cut back all the synthetic supplements, the Ds, the As, the zinc, the irons, all those things high fructose corn syrup, because when you do all these with nutrition, you're eating food, you're replenishing with the minerals that we can utilize. You're de-stressing the system. You're, you're preventing the, the, the chelation of copper because when you're chronically stressed, you produce proteins that bind copper. When you eat foods like glyphosate that are, you know, basically depleted in copper, but they also bind copper in the body and you poop or pee them out. So that's the first step. That creates the foundation to de-stress the system, but begin to get the liver to producing Ceruloplasm, bioavailable copper. It begins to fill the tanks, get the recycling system working in. It gets things pumping in all cylinders. How long does this take? It could take three months, could take six months, could take longer. Just embrace the process and realize what you're doing. From there, depending on the person, we add in things like mineral drops. We add in the adrenal cocktail, of course, because what that can do for minerals, but also stimulating bioavailable copper in the liver. And then, of course, along the way in this process, sometimes we add iron chelating supplements. And then the last thing that person will always do is blood donation to now that iron recycling is going. And now that we're replenishing minerals to support the system and reduce stress and support our cells and support our thyroid. And we're chelating some of the iron because we know we're overloaded. Right, we are overloaded. This is high ferritin, high hemoglobin, all these things. We need to bring things down. So now that the recycling system's working, we need to pull some of it out of the tissues and then we can donate the blood because now we have the resiliency. Now we have the energy tank filled. Now we have the mineral tank filled. We're taking some iron clay supplements and we can start 
putting out the forest fire even more and donating blood, depending on who you are, men every two months, menopausal women every two months, cycling women, depending on where they're at, sometimes twice a year, sometimes more. So it's a process, of course, but you can do it. So hopefully this video makes a little bit more sense. Put your comments in the comment section below. As always, thanks for tuning in. I'm out.